Well, hello, hello again. Uh, Liz Doria here, your tax advisor accountant. So here goes another update with the um, EIDL loans, right? Uh, I just recently uh, published another one for the updates of PPP. And also to let you know to well, just be cautious. Uh, as I mentioned last uh, video, I think it's something that you might want to look back and watch. Even if you don't have a PPP, maybe someone that you know that has uh, been approved with the PPP to be very cautious because um, I do take a lot of IRS direct web, you know, webinars with them and there was a recent uh, update um, and apparently they are contracting a lot of new agents because they're uh, concerned with some uh, fraud and uh, people double dipping, right? Um, and I think we're going to be seeing that quite a lot and a lot of people doing it, I understand, because they're desperate, they need the money, it's the only way they can keep their business afloat, but um, well, uh, that's uh, that's gonna backfire one way or another. So you know, uh, you might want to go and watch that, or recommend it to someone that you might know that do have a PPP. Um, the IDL is pretty much the same. You know, there's a big difference with IDL. Uh, mostly, you know, when it's directly with SBA, what you're gonna notice is that it's more for disastrous um, type of loans. Um, now, what I've seen is a lot of smaller businesses, especially the typical, uh, you know, uh, solar um, uh, proprietorships, um, independent contractors, uh, gig workers, uh, most of them, they did apply for the IDL. Um, I think in my own professional and personal opinion, I believe that really was, uh, it's, for some people, it was a little bit easier um, in the sense where um, hopefully they got lucky enough where their application got processed, approved, especially because um, definitely with the new updates, I'm sharing here my screen as it is. Uh, for those of you who are watching me uh, through my YouTube, that's great. Uh, you might be able to look at the link I'm going to put in the description of the one of the most recent articles through um, CNBC. Um, this, um, the title is actually Federal Disaster Loan Program Applications No Lower Limited to Agriculture Businesses. Um, if you may recall, uh, roughly about two weeks ago or so, they have opened up uh, the portal uh, for the IDL. And uh, it was only strictly for agriculture businesses, which I'm glad they did, because they also need help. Um, I don't know if some of you know, but unfortunately, a lot of local farms are, you know, barely making any ends meet at this point, um, because a lot of them, because again, with the coronavirus, there's been a lot of concern um, in a lot of staffs, well, some of them have been sick, others have decided to be in unemployment, so they haven't had the assistance that they needed to really um, continue the production uh, of their farms and such, right? Um, the good news is that now it has opened again, just, just been open for a couple of days, who knows for how long, so for whoever's listening to this, whether it's through my podcast episode or possibly through my YouTube channel, uh, do not wait. Uh, I would definitely say to you, hurry, uh, be persistent and make sure that your application, uh, you do get a um, application ID number. Um, I have heard some people already complaining a little bit about some issues connecting. Um, I know there's been major improvements, that's for sure, since, since, uh, since early April, uh, but uh, that was at the time that I applied. Um, and I heard a lot of complaints and, you know, people um, saying how, you know, uh, terrible, honestly, I mean, all this, uh, you know, whole thing has been handled and I agree. I totally agree. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, they, they have so many people out there still, still as it is, um, you know, in, in this month of June, that they have still waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and you know what, it's just ridiculous at this point. And, um, and I said that in the last video, I mean, include myself. I mean, uh, I mean, been in business for many, many years and, uh, you know, hey, I was entitled to apply for the IDL and guess what? I'm still waiting. Yeah, <laughs> you heard me right, I'm still waiting. So uh, how did the IDL, um, uh, you know, loan officers uh, pick and choose 
uh, who they were going to prove or why they were going to deny. I mean, I was never denied. I never got a denial letter. And I know a lot of folks out there did not ever receive a denial letter. And at the same time, um, we're still waiting. And we've just been given the round and round. And every time we call, you know, it's processing, it's waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, I have also known some colleagues that they have actually told me recently that they did finally receive some sort of a, um, proposal of what kind of loans that they were going to offer them. And they were so uh, lowball that I can tell you they were less than $5,000. Yep, you heard me right. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how and what the uh, criteria they're using to determine. Uh, for example, I know cases that someone is just a gig worker with less than maybe a year or two years of having an LLC, and they offer them $50,000. And then you have someone uh, with an S corporation, right, which we have a huge you know, responsibility to file a separate business return and pay yourself for the payroll taxes and such and such. And yet you would think, well, that's, you know, a corporation. They should probably be, you know, having a, a different consideration. Well, that's not the case. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I know many as corporation, again, including myself, that we have not have got a proposal yet of how much they're willing to offer us. And uh, I think a lot of people, if you're listening to this, watching the video and if you apply at the end of march early april like i did i know a lot of us i think we're like uh in a loophole i mean honestly i i mean i have no idea what the heck is going on because whoever they hire you know at that time apparently a lot of our loans have just got pulled back i mean they're just holding back on these loans for whatever strange reason I don't know whether they fell between the cracks or whether they just had some agents that are no longer working for an idea for these type of applications. Whatever it might be, uh, I just find that, uh, in my own opinion, I find it's unreasonable, unacceptable that many, uh, you know, legitimate businesses uh, are still waiting to get an answer. Um, yeah, they received the grant. I received my grant too. Yeah, absolutely, I did. Um, and I'm grateful for that, but, uh, you know, that didn't help me much, right? Uh, so the fact is that I think that um, as of mid-April, most of those people who apply around the period that I did, again, if you're one of those who apply end of March when the portal was open and actually you were able to upload those documents and you actually did that like I did way back in March 29th, um, and uh, two days later, I received a letter, you know, I'm sorry, uh, you know, an email uh, stating that I needed to do the online also um, application. Anyhow, either way, I did that too. And yes, I got my grant, like I said before earlier, but I mean, the loan is just somewhere up there and nothing's being handled. And I know that if I'm one of those, uh, there's plenty of other, uh, you know, a uh, couple hundreds of thousands of other applications that I really personally think fell between the cracks. I know that I have reached out to um, Javita, whatever her name is, here uh, as she's the uh, the pointer for for you know the SBA. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, uh, I don't know how she's handling this. I mean, apparently she's expediting some 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 of those applications. But you know what? What really surprised me, uh, and maybe you might share this with me, is how do they determine? And again, what what do, what kind of criteria they're using to determine why some people got completely approved? And I know that because I know these companies that got approved after people that apply like me. You know, and like I said, they got nothing to do that some companies, yeah, they were larger, you know, uh, more employees than me. And then there was other ones that had no employees. Like I said, they were just freelancers and they got their loans. It, it makes no sense. It really doesn't. I mean, you can tell that it's a broken system. Um, definitely, uh, there was not a, uh, you know, uh, a guideline really being followed properly and especially not professionally. Um, and the fact is, uh, I think a lot of us were kind of tired at this point of excuses, right, from uh, SBA 
uh, telling us that we have to keep calling and going online and sending emails to the customer service and then they don't respond. And when they do respond, they give you that kind of generic, you know, type of email like, okay, we'll get back to you. Yeah, okay. Um, sure. But anyhow, you, you know where I'm going with this. So the fact is, the good news is, yes, the portal is open. You know, uh, I heard a lot of people out there saying, oh, you shouldn't apply again. You know what? I would say, yeah, apply. Why? Because the reality is that if you haven't got a loan and you only got a grant, what's the worst that can happen? That hopefully maybe you get lucky enough that this time you do get a loan officer or someone to process your application. And at least you have a better chance that maybe and finally, you get a loan from SBA before the money dries out, right? Because the reality is they've already been approving. That's right. They've been approving 50000 75000 I think the maximum they're doing right now, I, based on what I have heard, it's about less than $150,000. Uh, the majority, they're under $65,000. Uh, but listen, if you can get even $30,000, go for it. I mean, uh, I think at this point, we all need to do the best we can. And what's the worst scenario? That it might give you an extra grant if you get that lucky. And if you do, then hey, you can always return it. But the fact is that right now, we all need to do what we need to do. And I think it's unreasonable. Um, like I said, a lot of companies, including myself, that we did apply at the, we were the early birds, as we call, uh, and yet we were neglected. I mean, we were completely, you know, forgotten in, in, in the pile of applications. Um, so if you one of those and you're listening to this again, watching the video, uh, you know, apply. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You get denied or maybe they come back and say, hey, you already applied. Good. Go ahead and review my first application. Mm, what happened? You know, so you need to do the best you can to um, keep your company afloat. And uh, I know some people have applied also for PPP and they got both. Uh, and yet, like I said, others are still waiting for just one of them to get approved. So it just makes no sense. So anyhow, the good news is that the portal is open. So I would say, yeah, go ahead and apply. Um, also, I have heard something I want to share um, is that if you did apply, because by mistake, um, when they opened the, the portal two weeks ago with the agriculture um, uh, only businesses, a lot of people got confused and they went in and applied. Um, and guess what? I have been hearing that some of these people are actually getting up, uh, they get an email um, telling them to go ahead and um, submit some of the information. So if you want those, go for it. Uh, I say right now, I think that if you are getting unemployment, especially the federal emergency, uh, you know, unemployment, remember that you cannot double dip. And I mentioned this in the last also um, video with the PPP update. Um, if you get an unemployment, let's say for an example, and right now, finally, you get your uh, EIDL uh, loan approved. Once you receive that money, once you get that deposit, then you, you know, normally need to go ahead and stop your unemployment. Because at that point, remember the idea is also to help you with your payroll or to pay yourself, you know? So you need to make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble um, because again, I, I mean, I just recently did an RRS um, uh, live uh, you know, webinar and apparently they, they, they're gonna get a little tough on this. Um, they don't want no one double dipping. Um, so, you know, just be cautious and, and, uh, and you know, just keep an open eye, do the right thing. And uh, listen, we are trying to stay, uh, you know, in business and not go out of business. Um, so I do understand people struggling. I understand it because I've seen it with my clients. So I want to say to you is do what it takes. And if that means, like I said, that um, you have not heard back from, uh, uh, you know, for your, for your idea alone, don't stop. Don't wait. Jump in. And if you have to apply again, apply. What's the worst that can happen? They can come back. I know a lot of people telling you, don't apply. Yeah, apply. Because I think it's unfair that some people got their loans after, uh, you know, the early birds, and then we're still waiting around, but yet others got the money. It makes no sense, but that's the reality, folks, and we need to deal with it. Um, and I think that maybe we get lucky enough that we get another loan officer, like I said, to review our application to finally decide, ooh, we made a mistake here. 
And we need to help these companies that have been on the pipeline, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting for, you know, almost nearly, you know, two and a half months, right? So again, don't give up. I want you to really jump in, do whatever it takes to get the money that you deserve. The government has put that money out there. I know, I know, I heard a lot of horrible stories. Uh, you know, big companies getting the monies from PPP. I know as a fact, companies out there are getting two, five million dollars. And you know, folks, did they need the money? No, that's the truth. They did not need the money, but hey, they got approved. <laughs> so, you know, again, I want to help the small business owners like yourself, the gig workers, the freelancers that I know you're go-getters, you're struggling, you're trying to do the best you can. And you know what? I believe in all of you because I believe that as a small business like I am myself, and I've been running a small boutique accounting firm for the last 10 years, I believe that we do improve the economy. We actually hire vendors. We hire other people. So we do help with the economy. So if we can stay afloat, that means that hopefully we can hire new people and that's going to help completely, you know, you know, the finance situation here, in, especially in the United States. So again, don't give up. Again, if you have to apply consistently every day, send an email. Call them because believe it or not, all of that is getting recorded. They know when you call. They know when you're sending emails. So do not give up, okay? You deserve it. And you know what? It's time for you to get your share, your fair share. That's right. So if I can get any help on my team, by all means. By the way, I just want to kind of end up and wrap up um, this episode because there's something that I know that's coming up and it's going to be a red flag. And that is the fact. Like I said, they are hiring a lot more agents because they're, they're getting concerned about the double dipping. So make sure your record keeping and your bookkeeping is taking and keeping track, okay, of those monies that came in from loans and also the monies who are coming from the EIDL loans. Have that separate, even within your own books. Make sure you're tracking those in, in, incomes and expenses because if there's ever an audit, and that's going to be very possible, I hope I'm really wrong about this, but based on what I heard in that webinar, <laughs> doesn't sound too good. Uh, just giving you a heads up, make sure you track your expenses within your books. And like I said, we are going to be creating some sort of like Excel sheet with a chart of account or for QuickBooks if you're using it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and for a nominal fee, we're going to go ahead and have that available for all of you because that way you can probably help your bookkeeper or whoever's doing your books, um, make sure that you have those categories and you are tracking the way it needs to be tracked. And that way, by the time, you know, we hit, you know, before December for the PVP, at least you have that and for the IDL, yeah, you, for the first year, you don't have to worry about paying back. But you know what? Start from now. Keep track of that expense. Um, it's not worth it. It's just going to be uh, a headache that can be avoided if you do it from now. All right? So anyhow, I'm here for you. And like I said, if there's anything that I can help you with, here is, um, I'm going to leave a link of this um, uh, article, like I said, that recently came up. And uh, I'm glad, like I said, the IDO, the portal is open. Let's see how, for how long until, like I said, the money dries out. Uh, and I hope, like I said, I mean, most of us who are still, uh, you know, uh, are waiting, uh, hopefully we get some positive news out of this because, you know, again, I mean, we know that first it was a $10,000 and then that got knocked down to 1000 per employee. And that's because our friend here, uh, Dravita decided that, hey, I'm not going to give that much money out. I'm going to set up my own guidelines. Hey, you know, I got appointed for SBA. You know what I mean? I set up my own rules. I disagree. I think she should have followed what President Trump signed as a bill. I have a copy of that bill. Uh, and you know what? It's wrong. That's my opinion. It's wrong what she did and what she's done to really small, tiny businesses of, um, you know, not providing the monies and the funds that they needed to stay afloat. So um, anyhow, love to hear your feedback and your comments. And I'm glad if you got your money, good for you. Um, you know, make those comments too, because it's nice to hear also some of you were successful and good for you. Um, but realize that a lot of us are still, you know, on hold and, 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 you know, hoping for the best at this point. And I think that, you know, it's just, 
you know, it's just it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it really doesn't make no sense. But anyhow, I hope this has been helpful. And like I said, again, go for it, apply, make sure you have your application. By the way, they are requiring to you to sign not only the transcript, but if you do have your 2018 tax return, go for it. You know what? It, it send the transcript and send them your 2018 tax return. All right. Uh, remember, I mean, you know, a tax return is always going to be more valid than just a transcript. All right. How do I know that? Well, like I said, I've been doing this for a living for more than 15 years. So it's a long, long time. Um, I do the talk and I do the talk and I do the walk and I do the walk. So um, definitely with that said, I mean that jump, do your application and I wish you the best and I will see you in the next update. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Okay. And healthy and strong. And let's stay all optimistic that things hopefully are going to get better for all of us. Take care. Bye-bye.